Hello everyone, in this video we will be understanding life cycle of an important parasite which is uh, Plasmodium. In this video I will only cover the pre erythrocytic cytogeny which is one of the initial step involving the liver or the liver cells. We will understand uh, what are the fundamental concepts uh, especially focusing on pre erythrocytic cytogeny. As you can see I have already uh, designed all the illustrations that uh, we will be uh, using in this video and then I will explain everything step by step. Hopefully, you will be understand. You will be able to understand the pre erythrocytic cytogeny uh, after the after the video is complete, right? So, few few points before we start this video uh, because uh, we need to understand what Plasmodium is. I have uh, not written Plasmodium as such here, but different forms are written. For example, uh, here I have written some of the the species. Here I have written uh, the forms like uh, sporozoids, and then you will have trophozoids, you will have merozoids. These are some of the important forms uh, when it comes to the life cycle of Plasmodium, uh, of uh, Plasmodium vivex ovale or other species, and we'll discuss all, all of them. Now, first we need to understand the Plasmodium. Uh, we need to understand Plasmodium is a, a genus of parasite, parasitic protozoan. So it's a it's a protozoa. It belongs to phylum protozoa and uh, it causes malaria it is one of the imp one of the you know potentially deadly disease that can affect humans and it can also affect uh, animals so that is uh, one point and one of the causative uh, species there are a lot of species more than 200 species of plasmodiums the, uh, plasmodium that are, that is known uh, the ma majority of those uh, species that causes human illness includes the plasmodium falciparum Vivex, Plasmodium vivex, and uh, Plasmodium ovale. I have written two here. Others are Plasmodium uh, falciparum, Plasmodium malaria, Plasmodium nolesi is another one. And in all of them, Plasmodium falciparum is the most lethal uh, form of the malaria. So that you, you need to understand. Right? There are different uh, species, and uh, they will differentiate on on various aspects. For example, they will uh, they will differentiate on their uh, you know the the frequency of the fever that will be there in the in the malaria what kind of merozoids how many merozoids they will produce and there are various features morphological features also uh, based on that they can be uh, differentiated but overall type of malaria and we uh, we will also include different types of malaria uh, where different kinds of pathophysiological complications are there right? based on that you can classify these different uh, uh, species and also the type of malaria they will they will cause Correct. So from here, uh, next thing that we need to understand is uh, again one of the basic uh, basic uh, concept in 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 this uh, uh, the infection is uh, what is the cause, right? So malaria is basically transmitted by the female Anopheles mosquito. That means there will be one cycle that is in the mosquito. Another cycle will be in the in the humans or in the uh, in the animals. Correct, and then uh, we will we will have another part of this life cycle. For example, we'll have pre or exo erythrocytic cytogeny. We'll have uh, erythrocytic cytogeny, and then we'll have gametogony. So these are different forms of uh, uh, you know uh, the the or the parts parts of the life cycle of uh, uh, the malaria parasite. Now, malaria is is uh, is a deadly infection, and it it can lead to a range of symptoms, including high fever, chills, uh, sweat fatigue, severe cases, organ uh, failure, and death can also occur because a lot of damage is going to happen. As you can see here, it will start with liver. Although liver will not uh, have that high amount of damage, but as you can see, inflammatory response will cause uh, critical organ failure in this case. Next, there are different stages that we'll, we'll understand one by one. We'll start with uh, pre erythrocytic cytogeny and we'll design this illustration that we that we do in our videos and then slowly, slowly you should be able to understand this life cycle in more detail. Correct? So why don't we just move on to uh, the, the slide where I have, uh, as you can see, I have designed all these uh, individual components and I'll start uh, uh, start from uh, from the from the from uh, one of the important uh, organ that will be targeted in case of uh, in case of malaria infection, which is uh, liver. Right. So you have to understand what is happening in this case is the the animal or the human. I'll, I'll just say humans in this case uh, will will have a sexual reproduction, a sexual reproduction of the parasite. So human is basically the intermediate intermediate host in this case. Definitive host is the host where sexual reproduction is going to happen. In this case, you'll have a female. Uh, Anopheles mosquito, not males. The reason behind it that uh, the female Anopheles mosquito uh, will only uh, feed on uh, human blood. So I have this uh, uh, illustration for the mosquito, right? So this mosquito is basically is going to bind uh, the human for blood meal, and uh, you know I just <coughs> mentioned that why why the female Anopheles <coughs> will sorry about that will require blood because um, it feeds on blood. It requires blood for the egg laying process. So that is why, you know, uh, the mosquito will come and bite 
uh, the human for the blood meal and then it will uh, it will release a sporozoites. So now we'll, we'll know what are sporozoites. These are the sporozoites that will uh, basically be released from the salivary glands of mosquito into the human, right? So these these are uh, these are uh, present in mosquito. Correct. So mosquito will carry sporozoites, and then when it will inject, uh, you know, uh, its proboscis to to uh, to take the blood out. It will also deposit uh, the sporozoites into uh, the human blood, and this is this is one of the important phase. And now sporozoites they are highly motile form of the parasite. Now their job is to specially move uh, very very quickly from the site of the bite and quickly reach to the to the liver. I also have the liver, so let's let's why don't we just place the liver over here? And the sporozoites they will they will quickly travel through the body and then they will reach uh, to this organ in this case, which is liver. Correct. So this will happen, and it will take uh, uh, approximately 30 minutes, uh, more or less, right? So the time travel by sporozoids to reach to the site of the, the liver is is very 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 quick because it is important for the parasite to evade or uh, escape uh, from the immune system that is present in our body. So just to not initiate any Im immune response, it will quickly travel through the uh, through the circulatory system and reach. Uh, the organ which is liver in this case and from here uh, the erythrocytic cytogeny will start so why don't I just uh, change everything and I'll show you how it is going to happen right and and uh, and then you should be able to understand uh, all these processes in more detail so I'll increase the size of our liver so that uh, we can we can show individual um, steps or individual stages so this is the liver illustration that I'm showing you and then what will happen as we already discussed the sporozoids that are over here Correct. These sporozoids, I'll move uh, the human illustration over here and mosquito also over here, we'll use them again. So these are the sporozoids and, and then uh, they are uh, traveling through the circulatory system and now they, they almost reach to the liver. And now what will happen, they will cause uh, the infection into, into the uh, liver cell. So first stage uh, basically in this case uh, will be uh, the infection of uh, hepatocytes. So here what will happen and as you can clearly see over here the sporozoids right over here I can I think uh, it should be placed like this otherwise what will happen everything is going to get distorted right so all right so this is uh, the sporozoid entered inside uh, the liver cell and you can you can oversee here a few sporozoids that have designed sporozoids they have entered into the liver cell now what can also happen in various uh, other species uh, that it can it can undergo a dormant phase. Dormant phase means the parasite can stay dormant into the liver cell. So this is I can show over here. Suppose uh, this liver cell got infected with the with the uh, with the parasite, right? So parasite can stay dormant. Uh, so pardon me if I'm using viruses because I made so many videos on viruses. So here we are discussing parasites, not viruses. Uh, right uh, but it is very very fascinating you know how the infection occurs with bacteria with parasites and with uh, with viruses you know it seems like they have evolved the process of uh, uh, the infection and uh, it is slow in case of bacteria it is a little bit faster in case of parasites and it's very very acute in case of uh, uh, the viruses but anyways we'll discuss that uh, uh, you know in in maybe in another video but let's focus here uh, we were understanding that the the parasites they can also stay dormant means uh, it will be causing uh, the the infection especially this happens especially in case of uh, uh, these two parasites species one is plasmodium vivax and another one is plasmodium ovale in 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 these two cases what happens is the the parasite can can basically stay dormant and then just stay inside the liver cell for a long long time maybe for even years months it can stay in there it's called hypnozoids so I'll, I'll just use the label for this one because I've already designed, right? So I can label this one. So I hope you can now see the, these are the hypnozoids over there. They are in dormant stage and uh, mostly it is associated with Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale malaria. Now what can happen after a few years, it can, it can undergo some changes and it can again reappear and cause the malarial symptoms, right? So I guess that is why the tip of the... Uh, this arrow was, was still there. Anyways, so I'm going to use uh, that tip to complete this one. Looks good. Okay, so this is how it can happen. So these hypnozoids can also, you know, uh, get activated and become sporozoids. So that is one part. 
Okay, after that, when, when sporozoids, they entered into uh, the hepatocytes, what can happen? There are some changes uh, that can happen and it, it can become of another uh, form, which is called trophozoid. Pretty, very interesting, uh, you know, phase uh, changes that, that uh, usually happens with, uh, with, this, uh, with this parasite. So you can see what is happening in this case is uh, the parasite is, uh, is changing and it's becoming more uh, round in shape. This is trophozoid. This is also known as the feeding stage. Uh, it, it became uh, more rounded from elongated stage. So elongated stage is, is motile stage where it can it can move into the circulatory system and then reach to the to the uh, the site which is liver in this case, right? So that is uh, very very important. Let's use uh, the uh, the label for sporozoids also. So for, for basically better clarity. So this is, these are the sporozoids and now you can see sporozoids of all these species, they can undergo this particular phase. So I have, okay, I have uh, arrow for that. So they can undergo this phase, which is uh, infecting uh, the liver cell, hepatocyte in this case, sporozoids, they are causing, uh, you know, they are causing the infection in uh, liver cells, correct? And then they can also uh, stay dormant and become hypnozoids. So this is what it is explaining right over here. Now from sporozoids, they can become trophozoids, correct? So what is trophozoid? It's more rounded form. It is a more elongated form. It's motile, it's non-motile. It's there inside the cell. Next, what will happen? There will be a lot of, lot of different cell divisions that is going to happen inside this uh, trophozoid. Membrane is not going to divide. So what will happen? A lot of different, uh, you know, uh, nuclei will be will be there. And this is known as pre erythrocytic cytosine. And then it can be, uh, you know, uh, it can be, uh, immature cytosine, it can be mature cytosine, dep depending upon how many nuclear divisions that are happening. So for that, I also have this interesting illustration that I've designed. Look at this. So now I think uh, this will be uh, this will be more clear over here. You can you can clearly see what I've designed as uh, nuclear division is also happening. But initially, I told you that um, uh, this the the nucleus is going to divide rapidly, correct? And then after that, there will be uh, the cell division, and then you will have a small small merozoids that are inside inside the membrane bound structure we'll call that cytosol and then from there out of merozoids they are going to get released like this correct so it's very very clear over here how the merozoids they are getting released after rupturing the hepatocytes now these are those small merozoids that are released from one hepatocyte these are known as hepatic merozoids and this is uh, your cytosol over here correct and I hope it is clear how uh, the, the trophozoid got converted into cytosine and then cytosine they got converted into hepatic merozoids. Okay, what can happen next is they can they can target the RBCs and here it is. So we'll have another uh, stage of our life cycle. In this case, uh, it will be erythrocytic cytogenic. So that is why the malarial parasite, parasite's life cycle is a little bit, little bit complex uh, in nature because it will have uh, stages into the liver cell it will have stages in the rpcs it will have stage different stages inside um, inside the the mosquito right and that reminds me i should label our liver also okay so i'm placing this on the center and then i'm expanding uh, the host in this case which is human and then there is this tiny irritating mosquito that is going to bite this host and release these sporozoids so let's summarize again what we have discussed and uh, okay one label is left which is uh, asexual reproduction as i've already told you that in case of humans there will be asexual reproduction and in case of mosquito there will be sexual reproduction that will happen inside the gut of the mosquito correct so just to summarize what will happen mosquito will have sporozoids it will cause and it will try to take the blood meal during that process it will deposit sporozoids and sporozoids will move very very quickly to this liver and then uh, will infect hepatocytes and from there what will happen it will get transformed from sporozoids to a trophozoite and after uh, after that it will become cytosine and from cytosine it will become uh, hepatic merozoites and they can infect rbcs right so all these uh, steps they are basically divided into different phases one can be initiation where um, sporozoites they are entering into the host and reaching to the liver cell and then you have ev evasion uh, invasion of liver cells where uh, what is happening they are going to infect uh, the liver cell inv invasion that means they are going to enter inside the liver cell and then further it will have uh, a sexual reproduction where it, it is going to become uh, you know cytosine is going to produce a lot of merozoids so that is kind of a sexual reproduction that is happening and then release of merozoids correct so different phases are there important phases are there so we uh, we need to understand all these phases we'll break it down in more detail again uh, if you like the video then uh, yes please 
comment so that we can break it, break it down in more detail. Uh, we understand what are these forms. Uh, although uh, next video, obviously, we are going to cover the erythrocytic cytokine. I hope the video was helpful for you to understand uh, what the life cycle of malaria parasite is, what are different forms, especially focusing on pre-erythrocytic cytokine. We will be bringing more videos that will focus on uh, various other aspects of this parasite. And we are making a lot of videos in area parasitology, in area of biosciences, biochemistry, uh, genetics, so many areas we are targeting. So if you like the content, then please do subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoy watching those videos, then please hit the like button, share the video with your friends. All right. Till then, take care. I'll meet you in the next video. We'll, we'll be discussing more interesting topics like this. Thank you. Take care.